Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. The Flyers get a fantastic win. They beat the Habs 3-2 in overtime at home at the Wells Fargo Center. Home ice advantage is a legit thing for this Flyer squad. They almost let the game slip. They did. Carey Price showed why he is sensational. Carey Price held the Habs in this game and almost stole one from the Philadelphia Flyers. But it's ironic that the goal that went in in overtime was a tiny bit soft. But I'll take it any day of the week. Before we dive more into this hockey game, do not forget about the promo code BRODES. Use the promo code BRODES for $20 off of your SeatGeek's total purchase. Get yourself to a game now. Save some money. The Flyers took the lead in the first period. First eight minutes or so, it was all Canadians, but there was a surge. There was this moment where the Flyers clicked on all cylinders and they started to pump the Canadians with shots and opportunities. Phil Myers, with beautiful footwork, may I add, opens up his hips, takes a shot after the Flyers had a ton of pressure in zone and comes up high. He opens up his hips, he takes a nice shot from the point, great amount of... Bodies in front of the blue paint to get in front of Carey Price's face, and it finds a way. It just glides through the air, bang, finds the back of the net, and doesn't touch anyone. It was a great shot. one nothing Flyers. In the second period, one minute in, JVR in his area, sort of like the Wayne Simmons area, if you will, right in front of the crease, finds a puck, so many bodies by the blue paint once again, and JVR scores now. It was not a power play goal because the power play just ended, so it did not register as a power play goal, but they were set up in that formation prior to the goal. I point that out because a storyline in this game, the Flyers were 0 for 6 on the power play. I can credit the power play for the JVR goal, but statistically, 0-6 on the power play. Even if you wanted to give the Flyers credit for that, they still need to be better because they could have put this game away. They had plenty of opportunities, and it wasn't even like the power play looked good. They weren't getting in the zone properly, and then when they did, they weren't working it around good enough. They didn't get these grade-A chances. The Canadians would get it and send it down, and we would have to regroup and restart with another zone entry. There was really not a a moment on these power plays where they were clicking, and they were moving the puck well, and they were creating these passing lanes, and they were getting great looks. It didn't really feel that way, and there wasn't much flow to the power play play as a whole so they do need to work on that because coming into this game they were pretty damn decent at scoring on the peeper that needs to be a serious reason why this team is successful this year so two nothing flyers one minute into the second when I tell you this is the period where the flyers controlled everything it really was Carey Price stood on his head he was so solid and just in the right places at the right time. Positionally, creating the right angles for himself, Carey Price showed why he will be a legend in this game once his career is over because he's just so damn good. He's so quick. He's so big. He comes out in the right moments. He puts pressure on the shooters to really have to squeeze the puck in these spots that are almost impossible. Then one moment happened, and it was a negative for the Flyers. Nick Cousins, of all people, comes down the left side. The way I was watching it, of course, it was the left side. To Carter Hart, it's his right. He puts a puck on net and a bad rebound. It was a bad rebound by Carter Hart. It pops in the middle of the slot, and all of the momentum changed in that moment. Now, the only way Carter Hart will get better is by experiencing things like this. Playing more. That goal can't happen moving forward. He needs to control the rebound because the Flyers were pumping the Habs in this moment, really. They were throwing so many pucks on net. They were dominating the pace of play. And then you throw a puck from the outside the dots on net. It finds the slot. And just like that, all of the momentum has completely changed sides. 
So in that moment, Carter Hart needs to be better. Now, I'm pro Carter Hart. I think everybody is. That doesn't mean I can't point out what he needs to learn. He needs to learn in that moment to control that rebound. If you ask him right now, hey, Carter Hart, how do you feel about that one? He's going to say he wants that one back. And he should say that because he should want that one back. So the Flyers go into the third period with a 2-1 to lead. After peppering, and I mean peppering, Price. Third period, Carter Hart behind the net. He plays the puck. He moves it to Provorov. There's a turnover. Gets to Shea Weber. Carter Hart not fully back into his position after playing the puck behind the net. And Shea Weber goes top shelf on Carter Hart. Out of position. He was out of position. So I don't think Carter Hart played bad. Let let me get that straight. I don't think he had a bad game all around. But I do think the two goals were on him, if that makes sense. I thought he made some good saves in this game. I thought he was very solid at times. But when you look at the two goals the Canadians scored, it starts with him. Bad rebound and then playing the puck behind the net. Now, Provorov was in the mix during that turnover as well. I'm not putting it fully on Carter Hart, but he wasn't able to get back in position and Shea Weber put the biscuit where it needed to be. Wasn't bad, Carter Hart. Wasn't bad, but the two goals were on him. So just like that, after the Flyers, I thought, pretty much outplayed the Canadians, except for the first eight minutes of the game, it's tied. And you can't let that game slip. You just can't. That's why I'm very impressed that the Flyers found a way to win. Now, in that third, with about, what, six minutes left, Twerinsky gets a penalty shot. Rookie, young player, against Carey Price to win the game late third. He gives you a really... Bad luck. He just straight up shot it into Carey Price's blocker. I think you need to be a little bit more creative than that. It's not easy to deep Carey Price out of his skates, but you did exactly what Carey Price wanted. It wasn't a, a great look by any means. Maybe the nerves got the best of him. I don't know. Now, listen, sometimes shooting is the right thing to do. It just looks bad when you don't score. Oh, what are you doing? You should have deked. Right, That's what everybody says if you shoot and the goalie just saves it because it, it looks bad, even though it might be the right shot. But I don't know if that was the right shot. It didn't seem as if Carey Price gave him that opportunity to snipe him in that spot and Twerinsky just wasn't able to execute it. It didn't really look available the whole time, in my opinion. N- not that there was much open, but I don't know. I, I would have liked to see him do something else. But in overtime, once the game got to overtime, Early in, Sean Couturier rips a puck on net, and it hits Carey Price, squeaks through, and passes the goal line for the Flyers to get the W. I thought the Flyers deserved the win. They were the better team. And I'm proud that they found a way to squeak it out. I really am. They can't allow games to slip away like that. We've seen the Flyers totally lose games like this all the time. They found a way to win. And that's very impressive. You got Claude Drew and Jake Voracek with assists on Sean, on on not Sean Couturier's goal. It was JVR's goal. Philip Myers' goal was unassisted. And Kuti, I believe, was it Travis Konechny who got the assist on on that goal? That might be right. I, I believe it was Travis Konechny. Speaking of TK, he had a breakaway chance. He's all over the place. There was one play in this game, and it's so minor. This isn't anything that will stand out. But he was getting a pass as he was entering the offensive zone. He sticks his stick out because it was way too far in front of him. He uses his hand to kick it to his skate, and then he kicks it to his skate to try and get possession again. Now, the Canadians had a player involved to to mess up what he was trying to do, but just... His thought process to acquire that puck is insane. Like, what? Players don't do that. That's not a thing. Joel Faraby continuing to be up with the top dogs. Not saying the team. Talking about the line he's playing on. He had three block shots. Creating energy. Still creating energy. Kevin Hayes, six shots on net. He hasn't been producing point-wise, but I still think he plays the game the right way. He has the full ice two-way player, and he is a key piece to why this team is succeeding. 
I talked about Travis connecting and the style of play he has been playing with and the the pep in his step that he's been skating with. It's it's phenomenal to watch. The Habs are a good hockey team. Eight, five, and three so far this season. They have guys like Domi, Gallagher, Tatar, Druin, who are all producing. Shea Weber, their leader. They're a good hockey team. You know, it's a, it's an impressive win. You're on your home ice. You should get the win. But for the Canadians to battle back and for the Flyers to keep everyone calm, stick to the game plan, get the win, it's very important. Carey Price stopped, what, 40 shots? I'm telling you. And, and they weren't the shots where they were all from the outside. They were all just throwing the puck on that. I thought that there were actual chances where Carey Price made, he, he almost made it look easier than what it was because that's how talented he is. So to the common eye, it might look like, oh, they're just throwing pucks on from anywhere. But that's what Carey Price is so good at. He's just so good at position and and not giving up these insane angles for goal scorers to score goals. If he wasn't in net at one point in that second period, I promise you it would have been 6-1, to 5-1. to one. That's how good they looked. The Flyers, that is. I do think the refs were a little bit all over the place. For example, the Canadians were getting bench minors for taking too long to put people back on the ice, but was it the right people? The head coach was getting all fired up and disgusted and deservingly so, dropping the F-bomb. You can read his mouth. He's screaming the F-bomb at the refs because at that point, it might have been their sixth penalty already. And Well, to be fair, though, there were trippings involved that were obvious trippings. Too many men on the ice, those are obvious calls. So if if that happens, you can't not call it if you're a referee and say, well, they already had four or five penalties this game. No, you call it. That's what it is. But the bench minor late, it didn't cost them. But I thought that was a little out of line, in my opinion. But unless he had warnings, if if they were continuing to warn him all game long for taking too long to put people, the correct people on the ice after icing to try and save time, well, it's a different story then. I'll tell you what I'm nervous about, though. The back-to-back that's coming up. The Flyers go to Toronto. Now, granted, Toronto hasn't been playing fantastic hockey, but they came into Philly and got the job done. And then the next night, you're in Boston, and the Boston Bruins are playing elite hockey. They just are. They have their foot on the gas pedal from last year's Game 7. It's like they didn't miss a beat. So it will be a true test to go on the road and see what the team is made of. I wonder who will start in net, although probably both both will play. I wonder who's going to get the start. Maybe Brian Elliott gets the first game in Toronto, and then Carter Hart goes in Boston maybe just because Carter Hart has played the last two. Or Elaine Vigneault continues to, to stick with the goalie that has one back-to-back games and throw him in Toronto. Who knows? It'll be interesting to see, but I I love Elaine Vigneault. I really do. Everything he does, he holds players accountable. He's a, he's a tough coach, but a, but a player's coach at the same time. He's a good mix. He really is like the perfect mix. Let's see how the team responds, but it was an impressive victory in overtime. Ironic that the goal that went in was super soft after all the saves that Carey Price made. Got to get the W, though. Got the two points. That's big 8-5-2. and two. I talked about it. A loss here will put you at 7-6-2. Six, and, and I don't want 500 hockey. 7-6-2 and two feels too much like 500 hockey. 8-5-2. and two, Some breathing room. Can't lose these next two, though. Can't lose these back-to-backs on the road. Because what will that do? That will put you right back at, what, 8-7-2? and and That's 500 hockey to me. Get away from that. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.